Hello, and welcome to this webcast on our latest proposed IFRS taxonomy update, which is our consultation document. This document includes proposed changes to the IFRS taxonomy 2018 reflecting common reporting practice for disclosure requirements in IFRS 13 fair value measurement. My name is Isabella Ruta and I'm a technical manager on the IFRS taxonomy team. I'm joined today by my colleague, Colleen Konings, which is an assistant technical manager in the same team. The objective of this webinar is to provide some background information as well as a high-level overview of the proposals included in the proposed IFRS taxonomy update. Before we start, we would like to highlight that the views expressed in this presentation are those of the presenters and not necessarily those of the International Accounting Standards Board or the IFRS Foundation. Please note that you can download this slide deck from our website. The presentation today will be divided into two parts. First, we will provide some background information on common practice projects and we will discuss the project timeline. We'll also explain some specific IFRS taxonomy terminology used to describe proposals. Then, we'll provide a summary of the proposals. We've divided our proposals into three sections based on the requirements of IFRS 13 they relate to. The first section is related to the sensitivity analysis. The second section is related to disclosure of quantitative information about significant unobservable inputs that are used in the fair value measurement. And then the last section contains all other changes we are proposing to make which relate to various IFRS 13 disclosures. In this webcast, we will only provide a high-level overview of the proposals. However, we have also prepared a more detailed slide deck which covers the entire content of the proposed IFRS taxonomy update and also provides some examples. That slide deck is included in the package of supporting materials on the project page. So, let's start off with some background information. This proposed IFRS taxonomy update is the result of an analysis of common reporting practice. Let me explain how that fits into the structure of the IFRS taxonomy. There are three types of elements in the IFRS taxonomy, as you can see on the slide. The first type reflects presentation and disclosure requirements in IFRS standards. The second type reflects examples that are provided in IFRS standards or in the accompanying materials to the IFRS standards. And then the last type reflects common reporting practice, meaning information that is not explicitly required by IFRS standards, but is commonly reported by entities in practice. For each element in the IFRS taxonomy, we provide a reference that indicates whether it is a requirement of the standards, an example, or common practice. We sometimes add new elements to reflect common reporting practice. In order to do that, we analyze a sample of financial statements prepared applying IFRS standards to identify common reporting information. The objective of including common practice content in the IFRS taxonomy is mainly to reduce the need for entities to create their own taxonomy elements, which we often refer to as extensions. This results in more consistent tagging of IFRS financial statements, and then this increased consistency makes the data easier for users to analyze. We would like to emphasize that while elements reflecting common reporting practice are part of the IFRS taxonomy, this does not imply that this information is required by IFRS standards. Common practice elements are also not intended to provide guidance on implementation of IFRS standards. In the past, we completed a number of common practice projects. As shown on this slide, the common practice projects were initially focused on different activities of companies, and that resulted in gradual addition of about a thousand elements to the IFRS taxonomy. The new approach was changed to align the analysis of common reporting practice with the projects of the board's work plan. It further resulted in the initiation of the Common Practice Project on Fair Value Disclosures discussed today, which is aligned with the Board's post-implementation review of IFRS 13. Mm -hmm. 
Now this slide shows the key due process steps we have taken on this project so far. First of all, from April to July of this year, we have discussed all our proposals with the IFRS Taxonomy Review Panel, which consists of three to five board members and a senior technical director. We have also discussed our proposals with our consultative group at three public meetings. You can find recordings of these meetings on our website. In August, we sent a draft of the proposed IFRS taxonomy update and the IFRS taxonomy files for review to the IFRS taxonomy review panel and our consultative group. We would like to emphasize that the IFRS taxonomy review panel reviews but does not approve proposed IFRS taxonomy updates related to common practice. Today, we have published the proposed IFRS taxonomy update for public comment together with the IFRS taxonomy files and the package of supporting materials. We would like to encourage you to have a look at the supporting materials, such as the versioning report that highlights proposed changes to the IFRS taxonomy by comparing it to the annual IFRS taxonomy 2018. The document is open for comment for a period of 60 days, which ends on the 19th of November. After the comment period ends, we will analyse the comments and any other feedback we have received, and we will discuss any changes we think we need to make to the proposals with the IFRS Taxonomy Consultative Group and the IFRS Taxonomy Review Panel. And we're planning to issue the final taxonomy update early next year. Now we thought it would be helpful to provide a quick refresher of the key building blocks of the IFRS taxonomy, which are line items, axes, members and tables. Line items represent accounting concepts which can be numerical or narrative. For example, the IFRS taxonomy contains a line item revenue from contracts with customers to reflect a disclosure requirement in IFRS 15. Axes, together with their members, represent information categories that accounting concepts can be broken down into. For example, the IFRS taxonomy contains an axis for segments, which allows an entity to tag revenue disaggregated by segment. Finally, line items, axes and members are grouped together in tables. In the IFRS taxonomy, all tables have an associated text block to allow tagging of the entire table with a single tag. We collectively refer to the items on this slide as IFRS taxonomy elements. On the next slide, we have an example of a tag disclosure to illustrate all of these concepts. The disclosure on the slide is from IFRS 15 illustrative examples, and it shows an entity's revenue broken down by region and by segment. Suppose we want to tag the revenue from the energy segment in North America, which is indicated with the orange tag. We would tag the number 5,250 with the line item revenue from contracts with customers to reflect that this amount represents revenue. Then we would also tag it with the geographical areas axis with the member North America to reflect that it's revenue from North America. And finally, we would also use the segments axis with the energy member to reflect that the revenue is generated in the energy segment. All the elements we've mentioned, that is the line item, the axes and members, are included in a single table in the IFRS taxonomy. The entire disclosure, which is all of the information included in the green box, could also be tagged using the table text block element disclosure of disaggregation of revenue from contracts with customers. This example also illustrates the concept of extensions, which we've briefly mentioned before. The IFRS taxonomy does not aim to cover disclosures that only a small number of entities report. For that reason, it is possible for preparers to add their own elements to tag such disclosures if they have the permission of the filing system owner for example, the regulator in a particular jurisdiction. In this example, the members North America and Energy are extensions created by the entity. If you would like to learn more about these concepts, we recommend you have a look at some of the materials we have on our website, such as the Preparer's Guide and the Guide to Understanding IFRS Taxonomy Updates. 
So that brings us to our first set of proposals, which are related to the sensitivity analysis. The purpose of the sensitivity analysis is to explain to users of financial statements how sensitive a fair value measurement is to reasonably possible changes in the measurement inputs. On the slide, we've provided an example of what such a disclosure might look like. For example, the entity discloses that if the discount rate had been 5% higher, the fair value of its assets of class A would have been 3,000 currency units lower. For such a disclosure, depending on the filing rules in their jurisdiction, an entity may need to tag all of the amounts, which includes the changes in the inputs, for example, the increase by 5% indicated with a red tag, and the effect on fair value, for example, the decrease by the 3,000 currency units indicated with a green tag on the slide. The entity may also need to tag the entire disclosure using a single table text block, which is indicated with an orange tag. Users of the tag data can then extract and analyze this information and compare it across entities in an easier way. Our proposals to change the IFRS taxonomy aim to improve the way sensitivity analysis are tagged, which makes the tagged data then easier for users to analyze. The first proposal is to create a separate table and table text block for the sensitivity analysis. This would make it easier for users to extract and analyze the sensitivity analysis separately from other fair value disclosures. In the example on the previous slide, the content of the text block is indicated with an orange tag. The aim of the second proposal is to allow tagging of sensitivity analysis that are disaggregated by input. In the example on the previous slide, both the change in input and the change in fair value are disaggregated by inputs such as the discount rate and expected cash flows. Currently, an entity would have to use extensions to tag such disclosures. The third proposal on this slide changes the way the change in inputs is tagged. In the example on the previous slide, it was an increase by 5% in discount rate indicated with a red tag. We are proposing to introduce numerical elements to tag separately increase and decrease in inputs, while before we only had text elements. The two proposals on this slide improve the way the effect on fair value is tagged, which in the example on the slide 11 was the decrease by 3000 currency units, indicated with a green tag. The first change on the slide will capture the direction of the relationship between changes in input and change in fair value. Applying our proposal on the example on slide 11, it would mean that the decrease in fair value of 3000, indicated with the green tag, will now be tagged with an element that indicates that this change in fair value is the result of increase in an input. The second change will allow tagging of changes in fair value that separately show the effect on profit or loss and OCI. Also, as the effect on profit or loss and OCI can be either before or after tax, we have created elements to allow for that distinction. Now that we've discussed all changes related to the sensitivity analysis, let's move on to the second section, which is related to the disclosure of quantitative information about significant and observable inputs used in fair value measurement. On this slide, we've provided an example of what such a disclosure might look like. For example, this entity discloses that in measuring the fair value of other equity securities in the healthcare industry, it has used a weighted average cost of capital of 2.1% as an input. Now, depending on the filing rules, an entity may need to tag all the amounts, which includes all the values of the inputs like the one labeled in green. And the entity may also need to tag the entire disclosure using a single text block. Users of the tagged data can then extract and analyze this information and compare it across companies more easily. Our proposals to change the IFRS taxonomy aim to improve the way such disclosures are tagged, which makes the tagged data easier for users to analyze. We propose to make two changes for such disclosures. First of all, we've observed that entities commonly disclose information similar to the example for the following unobservable inputs. 
discount rates, rent, capitalization rates, and credit spreads. So we've added elements for those four inputs to the IFRS taxonomy. In addition, we've observed that entities also disclose information about many entity-specific inputs for which they have to create extensions. The aim of the IFRS taxonomy is not to add elements for all those inputs. However, by changing the way this disclosure is tagged, we aim to make those extensions easier to consume for users because all extensions for inputs will be members linked to an axis. That brings us to our final set of proposals, which relate to various fair value disclosures. First of all, some fair value disclosures are disaggregated by valuation technique and by class of asset or liability. And the two proposals on this slide add elements for some valuation techniques and classes of liabilities that are commonly disclosed. So an entity does not need to create those elements as extensions. Moving on to proposal 3.3. IFRS 13 requires entities to disclose a reconciliation from opening to closing balance for some fair value measurements. In our review of reporting practice, we found that entities commonly disclose a separate line item for exchange differences in their reconciliations. We are proposing to add line items to tag those exchange differences. And finally, we've observed that entities commonly report a statement that there were no transfers between level one and level two of the fair value hierarchy during the year, or that there were no transfers between any of the fair value levels. We're now proposing to add two text line items to tag such statements. Now, that brings us to the end of this webcast. We would like to thank you for listening and we hope you will review our proposals and submit any comments you may have. We would prefer to receive your comments electronically through our Open for Comment page on the ifres.org website, but you can also send your comments via email or post. Thank you and goodbye.